Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Peter Ricci Pellegrino. I'm from Dr. Zucker's lab here at uh, UNMC from the Department of Physiology. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a physiological phenomenon called sympathetic vasomotion, a technology that we've developed that allows us to quantify this little bit of physiology and how it applies to a really important um, clinical problem, which is hypertension. So hypertension is just a fancy doctor word for high blood pressure. Um, it's uh, this elevated uh, pressure in the blood vessels of of patients with hypertension um, serves as a breeding ground for atherosclerosis, so it predisposes to heart attacks and strokes. It also directly damages important organs like the heart, the kidney, and the eye. Patients with uh, hypertension don't know they have the disease. They're completely asymptomatic. Um, and it's, it's this combination of, a, of lack of symptoms and these lethal consequences that earned it its name as a lethal killer. It's the number one cause of morbidity uh, worldwide, recently surpassing um, tobacco use. And it affects one in three um, adult Americans. That's 80 million people, a billion people worldwide. And in the US, 50% of uh, hypertensive patients have uncontrolled high blood pressure. And some of this is because of failings with the um, medical system, but other issues are um, present with the current treatments that we have. And then specifically, um, adherence is a big issue. It's hard to motivate patients to take uh, medications that don't make them feel better, that sometimes actually make them feel worse. Um, and there's also patients that are taking their medications as prescribed, multiple medications that still um, continue to have high blood pressure. They have, they're resistant to the current treatments. So the ideal treatment for hypertension would be efficacious. It would have minimal side effects and it would be curative, meaning you'd take it once and then you wouldn't have to take it again. And this sounds like a little bit of fantasy, um, let me tell you a little bit about this really cool technology called renal denervation, which it was this kind of blockbuster uh, therapy for high blood pressure. Um, it's based on the removal of these, uh, as Charlie talked about, this killing of these nerves that go to the kidney. These nerves that go to the kidney, they come from the sympathetic nervous system. This is the part of your brain that mediates the fight or flight response, so like the um, adrenaline rush you get when you're in a stressful life or death situation. Um, these nerves are more active in hypertension and some animal studies from decades ago show that if you remove these nerves, you're able to reduce blood pressure, suggesting that these nerves are really important in maintaining the elevated blood pressure in, high, in hypertension. So in the early 2000s, a um, medical device startup in California developed a minimally invasive catheter technology that you drive into the renal artery and you unleash this radio frequency ablation energy, which fries these nerves, killing them, and will then cause a reduction in blood pressure. This is a minimally invasive procedure. Adherence is not an issue because you just do it once and then it's done. And this company really flew under the radar until 2009 when they published their phase one clinical trial data, which showed, um, this, was a, this was done in Europe and uh, in Australia at some select hypertension centers. And they showed reductions of 20 millimeters of mercury systolic blood pressure. This is, corresponds to reducing the risk of mortality from a stroke or a heart attack by 50%. Um, enthusiasm continued to mount when they pre presented their uh, phase two clinical trial data, which showed a systolic reduction of 32 millimeters of mercury. This is really a blockbuster kind of thing. And I really can't impress enough on you how excited um, researchers, clinicians, and industry people were about this technology at this point. Um, and this kind of culminated with Medtronic buying this startup for $800 million and every other major medical device uh, company following suit and investing in some sort of renal denervation technology. So Medtronic, after investing all this money, brought the technology back to the United States. They launched this sprawling 80 center um, phase three clinical trial. And this trial shocked the world when the results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2014. The trial failed to meet its primary efficacy endpoint. The innervation did not reduce blood pressure compared to a sham procedure. And so you can't spend all that money and all that time and all that effort and not go back and say what went wrong. And so the investigators did just that. They went back and they performed an autopsy on this clinical trial. And they found that the patients really just were not denervated. The patients didn't receive enough ablations and they did, the ablations weren't done in an anatomically correct way. But this really brought to the fore a huge problem with this technology, which is that there is no way to validate effective, an effective denervation. There's no way to say that you had a successful intervention. And really, we, there's this need for interprocedural feedback to give you increased efficacy, improve the safety of the technique, um, and decrease uncertainty in the technology as a whole. So 
meanwhile in Omaha, we uh, in Zucker Lab have been studying um, blood, um, the sympathetic nervous system. We've been studying these renal sympathetic nerves long before um, this kind of renal denervation rocket took off and crash landed. And we were interested not in the effects of these renal nerves on blood pressure, like everyone else, but instead on blood flow. And so the sympathetic nervous system innervates blood vessels throughout the body. And it sends these rhythmic impulses to these, sympathetic, to these uh, blood vessels. Um, this, these, um, rhythmic, these rhythmic impulses cause rhythmic constriction and relaxation, constriction and relaxation of these blood vessels. And that is what we call sympathetic vasomotion. So it's this rhythmic relaxation, constriction and relaxation that's caused by these rhythmic neural impulses that um, we're interested in. And we derived this um, new technology which allows us to very sensitively um, detect this sympathetic vasomotion using blood pressure and blood flow, which are very easy measures to um, derive in the clinic. And so we kind of asked ourselves the question, well, can we use this technology, oh, sorry, can we use this technology then to, uh, um, to assess whether or not a uh, kidney is innervated or not? And then could we use this, could this be a technology that's useful in the clinic to assess the effect, efficacy of renal denervation? So we designed a very small uh, rabbit study, which um, utilized the fact that each rabbit has two kidneys. Um, and so we took one kidney, we stripped the nerves off, we performed this very invasive surgical renal denervation. Um, and the other kidney we left fully innervated. We measured blood pressure um, in the abdominal aorta and then we measured blood flow to both kidneys. And we derived this blood pressure blood flow relationship. Um, and you don't really need, and so we, and this gives us these really pretty time frequency plots, which you don't need to understand to know kind of how this works. Basically, um, when we do this, we get this real time feedback of what the blood pressure blood flow relationship is. And when there is sympathetic vasomotion present, we see blue. And you can see that in the, um, an upper figure here, the innervated kidney has a lot of blue, which is absent in the denervated kidney. And so if we just quantify how much blue is in the innervated kidney versus the denervated kidney, we get a measure of this sympathetic vasomotion. And we see that when you remove the sympathetic nerves, you reduce this sympathetic vasomotion. And so our idea then is that we have a solution to this clinical problem. Essentially, we have a way of validating whether or not you've had a successful um, renal denervation procedure. Um, just as they do now, the clinician could advance a uh, commercially available pressure flow catheter into the uh, renal artery, measure blood pressure and blood flow, and then um, relay these signals to our uh, sympathetic vasomotion quantifier. This would give the, patient, the clinician an idea of the baseline sympathetic vasomotion. They would then perform the renal denervation procedure, measure pr blood pressure and blood flow again, and relay this to the sympathetic vasomotion quantifier, giving them some feedback saying, okay, now you've reduced um, sympathetic vasomotion from 145 to 110. Um, but this also gives them the ability to shoot for some goals. So let's say Medtronic says, well, we need to be more aggressive. We need to reduce um, sympathetic vasomotion by 50% in order to say that it's a, a successful procedure. The clinician can then go um, perform another round of ablations, measure pressure flow again, and look at this sympathetic vasomotion. And now you've had a successful procedure. So I don't know, I really look at this uh, kind of story of renal denervation as a um, general kind of story for any new technology. You have some new technology trigger which generates some uh, excitement um, and unrealistic expectations. And this kind of really peaked with Medtronic, um, spending $800 million on a very early stage startup uh, and gave way to this trough of disillusionment when the phase three clinical trial failed. Um, and really where we see ourselves working with the sympathetic vasomotion um, technology is on the slope of enlightenment, refining the technology, making it viable clinically, and making it productive. And so the, I keep mentioning Medtronic, there's another, there's a lot of other um, players in this space who have invested a lot of money. Um, this is, I don't have time to really talk too much about the other applications that we're pursuing, but we think this is a platform technology. Um, if you're, anyone here is interested in hemodynamic monitoring or orthostatic intolerance, please come find me or one of my colleagues afterwards. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, and we're really honored to receive a Nebraska Research Initiative um, proof of concept grant um, to pursue some more uh, studies. And these are the people who have been working on this. Uh, it's a really neat collaboration between uh, physiology, cardiology, anesthesiology, and the tech transfer office. Um, and we're really looking forward to this next year um, and doing these studies and hopefully being back in October of 2017. Um, thank you for your attention. I'll take any comments or questions at this time.
Yeah. Sure, yeah, so right now there's really no clinically viable way to, the, the, the methods that we have for measuring sympathetic outflow are kind of medieval, um, and so we don't really have a good way of doing that. And so it's, in sympathetic, um, the sympathetic nervous system isn't just important in renal denervation, but it's also important in kind of um, hemodynamic instability, so blood loss or things like that. The sympathetic um, nervous system becomes very active and helps the body to compensate. And so we see this as a technology that could be kind of like an early detection or something like that. So it, it's basically there's this really unmet clinical need. We don't have a good way of measuring this, and that's what we have. It's kind of like if you couldn't measure um, blood glucose and you're trying to treat diabetes kind of thing. Yeah, so that's a great question. So in the phase one clinical trial, they tried to do some kind of estimates of that, and it's, they think it's about 50%, um, but it's, it's really kind of tough to get a good estimate on that. But I think that that's a really golden kind of question. Sure. So we're not trying to propose an intervention per se. We're just trying to, it's a monitoring technique essentially. But I think that you're right. It would make, it, to tie some sort of like efficacy thing to reimbursement or to um, regulatory side of things, I think would make sense. That's not how it's being done now. Right, right now it's just a black box essentially. So yeah, so there's a Simplicity 4 like registry is, it, you can check online. It's, it actually has a really good safety profile. If you're a cynic, you might say it's because they didn't actually perform the denervation, but um, there's, at least that from that standpoint, everything has been really above expectations for safety. Um, anytime you're performing ablation into an artery, there's a risk of some sort of, uh, you know, of a vascular event. They haven't seen very much of that. Um, and that's one of the advantages of this. You could actually decrease the, the number of ablations and maybe decrease those events as well. Um.